Okay, one more time, back to BDNF. Uh, let's talk about BDNF and the influence of various forms of exercise on uh, BDNF levels. So I had the chance uh, this weekend to look at a study that was done recently that basically um, looked at whether resistance, meaning a strength training, had any effect on BDNF. So certainly there's a lot of research out there that, that uh, indicates both in rodent studies and also in um, in human studies that aerobic or cardiovascular endurance type training tends to increase BDNF levels, and I'm gonna specify peripherally, okay? So we'll re revisit that in a minute. Um, but there hasn't been as much research that looks at the effect of um, strength training on BDNF levels. So uh, this was in 2010, there was a study done in Brazil, 16, male subjects about the age of 26, uh, I think was the mean age. They were screened out if they had any kind of cardiovascular, metabolic, or uh, orthopedic type issue, or additionally, if they had any kind of anxiety or depression uh, markers as, as shown by like the Beck depression scale. So um, basically they wanted to compare um, large muscle groups um, versus small muscle groups and see if there was a correlation. They were expecting actually that um, that you would that strength training would in, would increase BDNF levels, and they were also thinking that possibly um, the fact that you have greater neuronal um, recruitment when you're talking about a larger muscle group that that might in fact influence the increase of BDNF levels. What they found in the study was basically BDNF peripherally was not increased um, in, in these subjects uh, with short emphasis on short term uh, exercise, acute exercise. Okay, so just a few um, points about the study that I think are worth um, worth connecting the dots for you. So thing one about this study that's a little bit problematic. The study measured uh, peripheral levels of BDNF, okay? Peripheral meaning in your cardiovascular circu circulation. Um, you can do a blood draw and, and pull off the plasma, spin out the plasma, that's part of the blood, uh, and then look at the BDNF levels. Well, here's the thing. You have what's called a blood-brain barrier where the circulation in your brain does not uh, always correlate with the circulation in the rest of your body. Now that's by design. That's designed to keep you safe and um, so that only certain things can pass into the brain, the very fragile brain tissue, right? Because you don't want, you know, you got some bacteria in the blood. Well, that's bad enough, you know, bacteremia, whew not good, you're going septic, that's not good. But do we additionally on top of that want it also to go into the brain and kind of maybe damage your brain? That would be especially bad. I mean, sometimes it does because it, you know, things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Um, and that, that can happen in a pathological scenario, but the, in a functioning organism where the blood brain barrier is actually functioning, part, the point is to filter stuff that goes into the circulation for the, blip, for the brain, thus keeping it safe. So um, let's, let's consider this. We have this factor, this neurotrophic factor that affects brain tissue and we're evaluating whether exercise increases it, but we're measuring it in the blood, not in the brain. Hmm, that could be problematic in terms of, is there a correlation? Well, we happen we have some research that indicates that in fact BDNF does not cross the blood brain barrier. Now it's a, it's still a little bit mixed out there um, in terms of if it crosses or if it doesn't cross, uh, but it, it appears that it, BDNF does not cross the blood brain barrier. Okay, so given that we're studying it peripherally, we didn't find that it increased peripherally. 
well, maybe that's a no shit Sherlock, right? I mean, would we expect it to increase it peripherally? Maybe not, because again, is the correlation there between what's happening in the, in the brain tissue and what's happening in the blood, if it's a, something that's gonna affect the brain? Just basic reasoning to me goes, um, yeah, no, we're, we're not gonna see an increase peripherally necessarily if it's something that's a factor for the brain because that's not where it's needed. Okay, that's problem one. Um, problem two, even if we assume, let, let, let's assume for just for the purpose of this study that um, there is a correlation between what's happening peripherally and what's happening in the brain tissue. Um, let's look at some of the me mechanics of this actual study on evaluating acute strength exercise, okay? They looked at two muscle groups. They were trying to compare if the larger muscle groups would would have increased the BDNF over the smaller muscle groups. Okay. The length of time that these individuals, they tested them at one week, then they tested them a week later, and the times they did basically 30 seconds, I think, no, I'm sorry, it was a minute after exercise, and then 30 minutes later, they looked, they did a blood draw. Okay. The amount of exercise was just two, basically two separate exercises were done, five sets of 10 reps each. The entire length of time, if you total, okay, they said the average amount of time it took for the male subject to complete 10 reps was approximately 30 seconds. They took 40 second rest intervals between the 30 second reps, right? The 30 second sets, I should say. For a total of five minutes of upper body work and six minutes of lower body work. Now, my gym rats out there will, will instantly recognize a problem with this. Do we see gains <laughs> from 11 minutes of work in the gym after one week? Not in my gym. Now, maybe it's different at Planet Fitness, right? Maybe you do that little circuit that they have and you see, you see results there. But, if, but the bros in my gym say otherwise. Do you, right, do you expect after a week? I mean, we know the muscles aren't gonna be big then. They're, they're barely having recovered if, it, if they even got worked. And 11 minutes is, I, perhaps perhaps not going to see the gains that we would expect in terms of the strength training protocol. Now, let's just take that, is that analogous to the BDNF? Do we expect that if exercise and strength training increases BDNF levels, right? Do we expect, okay, we need to correlate these results here. We're talking strength training. So strength training should be perhaps longer than 11 minutes. And perhaps we should evaluate it for longer than one week. Just saying. Okay, that's another problem. A third, was that my second or third? I, I'm losing track. Anyways, um, the, the individuals they looked at that were healthy, supposedly, they had never done uh, any kind of uh, exercise program in the past. Does that health equate? My crunchy naturopathic physician self says, mm, well, healthy, probably gonna match up with some level of exercise, right? Okay, so just a few problems with the study. Um, kind of a lot of the results, I mean, I, I would see such a thing and go, yeah, I wouldn't expect, I mean, that there would be results from that. On, on, on really any level. Would we expect that? No. So why do we think that's gonna increase BDNF? Don't know, but apparently some thought it might. There you have it. So even comparing length of time, oh, that was another piece I needed to say. say. Um, length of time of the exercise. If you're gonna compare apples and apples, oranges and oranges, 
Um, it, when you look at endurance training and the endurance studies that were done cardiovascularly, the period of time that people exercised was not 11 minutes. It was longer than that because to train cardiovascularly, you have to train longer than 11 minutes. You're not going to make any progress in 11 minutes. So um, that's another problem because, and the study actually it raised that in, in, the, in the remarks that perhaps it's distance or, I mean, time oriented that we see these correlations and in increases in BDNF levels based on length of time of the exercise and mode, or is it resistance training versus aerobic cardiovascular training? Maybe that doesn't matter if it's long enough. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, obviously more research needs to be done on this subject. Um, and hopefully the study is a little bit better designed in the future. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, love your comments, your subscribes, and your likes. We'll talk next time.